That's just the cutest little interspecies way. Can you wave this way? Oh. He's so cute. What we're going to be doing is just looking over their entire bodies and just doing a quick pinniped daily assessment on them. Come on. Mr. Man, Mr. Man. Hunter's five years old. He's the sea lion that rescued himself. He hopped up on a boat, and it happened to be a rescue boat. He tries to act like he's the tough guy, but he is the biggest softy. Look at him, you're so, so, you're a softy. I told them, they know now. I could have the worst day and he would make it the best day in the whole entire world. I just melt into his little eyes, they're so sweet. It's hard work being so cute, isn't it? The relationship that we build with our California sea lions, it's a partnership. This partnership allows us the opportunity to provide the best care for these animals. Hi, guys. Hi. And I have never worked with a species that makes me laugh so hard. <laughs> We're going to go through each set of the animals just to get a baseline read on how they're doing. Edie. Come on, Ed. What was that? What did you say? This is Edith. She came to us from Central Park Zoo. So she's a New Yorker. And now she's uh, a Southern Belle here in Atlanta. Just want to salute everybody, huh? Edith is our fastest learner out of all of our sea lions. <laughs> Good job, Edie. Learning new things is really motivating to Edith. She's a problem solver. Huh, Edie? Yeah. <coughs> she has a beautiful voice. She learns very quickly, and she's very, very confident. You see it? There we go. Good girl. All right, say goodbye. We got to head back. Good girl. Let's go. Come on. Chicks are around two months old. This is when they grow their waterproof feathers. Come on, crazy girl. So we're getting ready to introduce them to the water. And it's an exciting day. When penguin chicks first learn to swim, um, it's kind of a trial by fire. So there's a lot of panic. There's going to be splashing. There's going to be rushing to get out of the water. But we're suited up in wetsuits. We can intervene so they can't get into too much trouble. found out the sexes of the two chicks that we have, and the older one is a girl, and her name is Barbara. Look at you! Look at good girl! And the younger one is a boy, and his name is Doug. You ready, Doug? Come on, Doug! <laughs> Doug is a little bit more timid than Barbara is. building up his confidence little by little. So that gives me hope that he'll, he'll be very seaworthy shortly. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Doug. Good job. Barbara, what are you doing? You're so graceful. You're so cool. Doug's a little clumsier with the bathing here. <laughs> Good job.
think they're gonna be able to do this every day for sure. So. This is a very controlled setting for these guys. In the wild, it would have been a lot rougher. Uh, they are, wouldn't even have their parents around. They'd be in a group of, of young juveniles. And you can imagine crashing waves, rocks, and uh, the full terrors of the wild. Come on, guys. So this was quite a bit different. Even still, they were very brave for this to roam, too. Yay, good job. Today we are providing largemouth black bass. We're gonna to wanna to make the process of catching the fish easy. Good. The wild is not easy for polar bears, so we need to give them the biggest challenge possible. I provided largemouth black bass because I had to find a species of fish that was cold water tolerant, fresh water, because our system here is fresh water, not salt water and is safe for the polar bears. That's it. Polar one, mammal five. We're ready, you can go ahead and release them. Here comes Takik. Let's go, Keek. Takik's the best hunter. That's Kaluk on the right. There he goes. Chinook's checking everything out. I think she knows she's going in. There we go. <laughs> when the fish come out, the polar bears do exhibit their natural hunting ability, which is pretty amazing that we don't get to see all the time. Come on, Chinook. They're specialized to hunt seals. Their claws help them grip the sea ice. They have specialized canines and molars that help them tear seals apart. They're incredibly strong. Now she sees them. There we go. Come on, girl. Kalik just knocked his bone in. <laughs> he cares more about the bone than the fish. <laughs> He's got to get it itching first. Come on, Kalik. There we go. Come on, Kaluk. Oh. oh. <laughs> the bears each have a unique style of hunting. Kaluk try to push the fish up against the glass in a corner. Chinook, she tends to force him to the shallow end and try to capture him. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Missed it. <laughs> Providing fish does allow the polar bears to get a lot more exercise. It should be stimulating cognitively and physically, and it also builds muscle mass. We want our animals to thrive and not just survive. I'm en route to the back, so can you meet me up there, open up the gate, and turn the camera on? Home to mama. We've had the cub away seven hours now, so I'm gonna bring it back and put it back with its mother. You ready? You home. It, it's a huge risk separating a cub from its mother. Our confidence stems largely from the fact that we've had this great history with her, but there's a very real chance that that female won't take her cub back. We have done that with snow leopards in the past, but never for the length of time that we're separating this cub and, and her mother. Hi, Chris. This is something that I can't remember ever doing in the 20-something years I've been here. So yeah, it is a little anxious, and you never know what's going to happen when you do put them back together. She could completely ignore it and not care for it. Or she could be attentive, but not nurse it frequently enough. The worst case scenario is that she could kill the cub because um, it just smells different than when she left and where too much time had passed. She's uh, locked out of the den, I take yeah, she's it? Out of the den. OK. So you can go ahead and call them, tell them we're here.
It's pretty easy to say, yeah, I think she's going to allow us to give this cub back to her. But what we're basing this plan on is our keeper's ability to read the situation with this mom. I mean, they're relatively confident that she's going to accept this cub. But there's a lot of apprehension, because we don't want to be wrong. She's smelling her. Brenda, what are they doing? Let me go look, but I think we have a visual. They're both lying down side by side right now like nothing happened. This gives us great hope that we'll be able to continue therapy. That cub will learn how to be a snow leopard from its mother. It's something we really can't teach it to do.